So gang, uh, welcome to uh, Chat and Chew. Uh, today's Thursday, May 28th, and uh, this is presented by the uh, San Juan County Economic Development Council. Uh, we are a nonprofit uh, organization that works with uh, businesses in the county. Uh, currently, we're helping them uh, navigate the COVID-19 pandemic and all the issues that uh, businesses are dealing with right now related to that. Um, we are basically pivoting into recovery at this point. And uh, you know, these, these, these webinars that we produce are, are with a thought towards that. Um, any, any assistance that we can give to businesses along the way, uh, whether it's marketing or, or, or funding, um, you know, we're here to help, please contact us. Um, our website is www.sanwans, with an S, E-D-C, dot org or you can email us at info at sanwansedc.org. Uh, it's 12.02. Well, let's go ahead and get started, Chris. Okay. My name's Chris Mitty. I'm with Tiff and Gift Creative. We've been here on the island uh, as Tiff and Gift since 2002. Prior to that, we both worked at Rock Island, and that's when we took our, uh, took our department uh, private. And uh, we've been doing marketing since actually 95. We started doing digital marketing. Uh, so we've kind of seen everything from the very beginnings, from the humble beginnings to where we are now. Um, we've lived, again, on the island. We were here for 2008, 2010, a uh, big financial crisis. Uh, we were here when the, when the internet went out in 2013 for a week. Uh, so we've, we've dealt with all the, we've dealt with a lot of the problems. Sorry, I'm outside. We've dealt with a lot of the problems that we here on the island experience purely as islanders. A lot of other people just aren't going to have to deal with. Um, it, for example, the, the financial crisis of 2008 really didn't seem to hit us until 2009, 2010 and lingered quite a bit. So everything's a little bit different up here. So we have been doing this long enough that we uh, feel confident that we can, uh, we can help businesses move forward if they're not online, help them get online. If they are online, uh, ideas for enhancing their digital presence. Uh, it's a whole new world that we're, we're living in right now. Sure. So I'm here for any Q&A, whether it's specifically for me or more particularly about the industry in general. Um, so how well, about it? Sure. So what, is a, what does a typical, you know, I mean, there are certainly larger businesses that um, have had a successful pivot into digital online mm -hmm. uh, sales and service. Um, but, you know, when you scale that down to the businesses that are on the, in, in the county, like mm -hmm. what is, and, and you have experience with those you know what does that look like is it are we talking digital storefronts or are we talking digital experiences like what you know I, I think for some people it's you know what what would this do for me and 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 why would I why would I invest in this um, right. not knowing that there's any surety of outcome right um, well it all depends on the business one of the things that we do when we talk to some when, when somebody comes to us uh, we quiz them about their business for about an hour. We talk about what their needs are. Everybody's needs are different. So, you know, San Juan Community Theater is going to be different from the Orcas Community Theater. Um, everybody's, everybody's needs and requirements are always unique to their business. Uh, but in this case, it's even, it's even more so because we have COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we're not even able to sit face to face to talk with people anymore. So um, we've been doing websites, we've been doing uh, e-commerce, we've set up e-commerce systems for on-island companies, off-island companies, uh, the UK, uh, Asia. So it, it really depends, anything from an, a, a, a B and b website or maybe even just like a wedding placeholder website on Squarespace, all the way up to complete e-commerce system um, for multi-million dollar corporations. Okay. Um, and then, so can, can you talk about, and again, you know, kind of scaling it to businesses in the islands, you know, what an e-commerce uh, website would look like, you know, if, the, if somebody who comes to you and says, I'm like interested in building, I mean, is that basically a digital storefront with all the bells and whistles? It's kind of a digital storefront. Um, one of the things that we just did, we just did, a, a, we did two sites for an astrologer and for a yoga teacher. Um, those were, uh, those were for classes and online um, consultations. So that's one way to, in order for 
for one of our clients to move her business online. She had to utilize Zoom. Um, so we created a new website for her. She had started working on Squarespace and ended up getting frustrated with it. So what we did is we set up a, a WordPress site, which is primarily our, uh, the content management system that we use. And, uh, and so now she's able to do her classes online, uh, something that she wasn't doing six months ago. E-commerce could be anywhere from, say, you, the, say, Nash Brothers Sporting Goods, for example, if they start, wanted to start putting their website, wanted to create a website and start putting all their content online. Um, it, you could be looking at anywhere from a thousand to a couple thousand dollars for starters. Uh, it, again, it all depends. You know, if you're a chocolate shop and you have 20 items specific to San Lion that you want to, uh, that you'd like to make available to your, to your clients, WordPress may not be the, the right solution for you because uh, it is a little bit more robust. It takes more work. Um, so it really, trying to give an overall idea of what it takes to build a website or to create a, a digital storefront is, again, it's a very wide ranging, um, a very w wide ranging area. Sure, sure. And do you work, um, do you work with a variety of uh, 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 payment vendors like PayPal and Square, or are there some that are better to work with than others? And yeah, whatever you can say, sort of public. Great. Uh, it's been nice since Square and PayPal have come out. I prefer Square over PayPal. Mm -hmm. um, just because they're easy to work with, their APIs are really easy to work with. So integrating it into a website, again, if it's a you know five or ten item website that you explain that you plan on expanding, sure. uh, or it's an you know an already existing business, uh, so it, it it really varies. Gotcha. What are the what are the what are you finding? Are the fee structures comparable um, to uh, you know what they're already what storefronts are already doing with um, you know Visa Mastercard? Yeah, they're all comparable. They're all comparable. It's really the ease of use for us because we've set up where take we'd set up a merchant account at Islanders Bank, do it locally, um, sell our merchandise online, and then you know have to deal with it that way. Square is much easier. It's way easier for our clients um, because they can do it over the phone. They can do it online. Uh, going for a standard old merchant account is pretty outdated. Gotcha. Okay. So it's inexpensive. Stripe is inexpensive and it's easy to use. And that's typically who, who we would recommend. Okay, cool. And how long does it take, you know, for, you know, a small business to, you know, come to you and say, this is what we want to, you know, we want to set up a, you know, a website and, yeah, and pay and pay. It's usually a couple of weeks, okay. uh, again, depending on the scope of the job. If, if it's somebody who's coming to us and say, I'd like to set up my astrology, um, my astrology business where I can be consultant online, that, that's pretty, pretty small. There's really not much scale to that. But if we're looking at, uh, if we're looking at, again, say the sporting goods store, if they want to put all their stuff online, it's going to take a bit more time and a bit more money. So sure. it's really, we recommend that people start small. Uh, if you're, if you think you may end up having a larger, uh, a larger e-commerce presence, you may want to go down the direction of, of WordPress. If you think you're only going to be selling a couple of items, Squarespace, Weebly, some of those may work best for you. Okay. And then, um, do you integrate inventory controls, um, say for a medium sized business or even a small business, you know, small, like you know, that's selling, um, you know, clothing on the Island, for example, yeah, yeah, but, uh, inventory control. Like your website would be set up to show you what your inventory is. So you really don't need to, to do much more than, than check your inventory on your website, but you also have to stay on top of it to make sure that it's, if you're not, uh, if you're not selling via UPC and checking out barcode that way or QR, stay on top of it. But there are ways to, uh, to keep on top of the inventory. Okay, so that's something that you would build with the website. It wouldn't necessarily have to come already pre-built uh, pre from the vendor. But a lot of the point of sale uh, software that's out there can be integrated as well. So if people have already scanned all their stuff into their system, um, depending on which system they're using, there are a lot of plugins and APIs that we can use to, uh, to hopefully integrate that content to, to their website. Sure. Okay. Cool. Um, anything? Uh, you know, when I was on a call this morning, um, and guys, this is such a small group. Um, you're all unmuted, and if you want to, you know, if you have questions, just go ahead and jump in. Um, I was on a call this morning and they were talking about, you know, getting a, uh, somebody was saying, well, you know, I wish more of our businesses did um, like newsletters. Um, just, to, you know, we're out here and um, we have a physical, you know, we still, we might not be open, but we'll be open soon. Um, and getting news, you know, just newsletters or, or mail blasts from your favorite um, 
from places that you visited over the years or, you know, stores that you sort of had a, developed a relationship with. Um, and maybe that's something that, you know, our businesses in our community could be, uh, you know, kind of working up to. Is, is that something that's part of website integration or is that more just like something like just a simple setting up MailChimp or, you know, I would... Oh, you, I, I would recommend that's probably the least expensive way to start. If you have a mailing list for starters, that's a great mm -hmm. way. To start. Um, Constant Contact, MailChimp, any of those will work. If you're a nonprofit, uh, there's another one. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, Network for Good, I think, is one of them. Uh, but you, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just, I'm spaced out there. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, a, it's all good. This is a free flowing, you know, chew and chat thing um you know i just I, this is and this is just me you know c coming on the heels of having had a lot of these conversations with businesses over the last few weeks and you know and and there i don't want to say there's trepidation about you know looking at pivoting to digital but there's sort of a you know we're already in this situation that is you know not ideal for any kind of additional expenditure or investment um but at the same time, we're talking with businesses that have made that switch um, and are experiencing um, sales growth, you know, in, in some instances, more than what they would experience just, you know, in their brick and mortar site. That's so a lot of our clients right now, especially a lot of people that are doing online, um, yeah. teach online classes, it's some of the clients that we're doing marketing for. It's just it's exploding. Sure. So. I, mean, I wish I, I, I'm hoping maybe we can develop some hard data for that. Um, yeah down the line just just so people can 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 get there i mean yeah, you know even like, for a couple of our clients and our leads are probably up 10 to 20 percent over what they were last week and you know 10 percent to what they were prior to that so it's sure. pretty it's, it's i mean it's a, it's a horrible situation but trying to take advantage of of the resources that you have right now um again if you have a mail if you have a lot of email addresses of clients but you don't have a website you don't want to set it up um, setting up an email blast is a great way to do it. It's inexpensive. Um, you can do it yourself if you're comfortable with it. You can have, you know, somebody that may know more than, than you do, a, a cousin or a neighbor or somebody help you out if you need help with it. But yeah. it's a, a great starter resource and it's a great augmentation to an already existing digital presence, presence if you have it. Yeah. Yeah. We use um, EDC. We use um, ours is produced on MailChimp. And I had to get do I had to give myself a crash course in it uh, a week ago, uh, yeah. which was it was it was it was it was pretty painless. Yeah. Well, and they change it up every. It seems like every week they they reconfigure everything. So you kind of have to if you haven't done it for a month or so, you have to go back and relearn everything. But it's yeah, just nature of the beast. Yeah, yeah. At least it gives you a warning before you're going to send it out to you know, yeah. a few other people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but it's it, it's interesting. You know, I I think it's uh, you know we just. You know, websites have been around for so long that, you know, they're ubiquitous and people just sort of, you know, they're part of the background now instead of something special. And, you know, I think we're, I think we have an opportunity right now for, to create a new type of digital identity. You know, it's, it's, it's not a matter of if businesses really are, are going to do it, but more like when, you know. Right. Um, I'm surprised that there are businesses up here that are not online. Yeah. You know. Because it's the it's the best ROI, the mar best marketing ROI you're gonna get out of anything. Sure. It seems like um, uh, at least half of them are not online in any significant way. Who's that? Sorry. This that was Mickey. I was saying I think at least half of them seem to be not online in yeah. in any significant way. Yeah. Um, I had actually one question related to that, which is that. Uh, um, a number of, we've had a couple of people come in and talk about digital marketing and it seems like it's, they say, okay, you got to be on YouTube, you got to be on Facebook, you got to be on all these different things as well as keeping your Google. And it seems like even as somebody who's fairly tech savvy, that seems like, yeah. well, that's an awful lot of things to try to get started if you haven't been doing it from what, before. Yeah. What do you think your recommendation for like, if, if you're starting at zero, what's the biggest bang for your time investment or dollar investment to start with? I would start with just a really basic website. Uh, again, WordPress, we use WordPress and the great thing, one of the great things about it is it's scalable. So there's initial investment up front, um, initial 
you know, a, a good chunk of time that it takes to set it up. Even if you, you do or you don't know whether you set it up yourself or you have somebody set it up for you, it takes a bit of time. But, but once you have that, you can, you can build out from there easily. There's so many ways to build out the website um, that that's probably the number one thing I would say to do. Uh, if you're, if you definitely, if that's definitely not within your budget, uh, email blasts are great. Uh, the other option is to set up a Squarespace or a Weebly site. Um, again, we've had client, a lot of clients that have come to us because they have set up a Squarespace or a Weebly site and they've been having problems with trying to set it up. It just didn't work for them, et cetera, et cetera. So I think creating an initial digital presence, even if it's minimal, is the, the most important thing to do. Even if it's just a placeholder on Squarespace, if that's what you, what you with, is within your budget, then I think that's probably what you want to start with see what kind of what kind of feedback businesses get from their individual clients on their website and then you know they can because a lot of people won't know how they're going to want to build out their site either they know their business but they don't know how people behave online oftentimes especially if they don't have a website at this point they're not probably super savvy about um about how digital media and marketing works Sure. It takes vision. It takes a, you know, being able to look outside of your immediate yeah, circumstances and, it, it, and, and, and see how you're, yeah, yeah. And outside perception is what's going to drive people to your website, not your own. We work with marketers a lot in my other life. And, you know, it's, it, sometimes it is like that, you know, you have your own marketing brief in, internally, you know, like your thing that, you know, because you've been involved with it for 10, 20, 30 years and, you know, you know how everything works, but, but trying to bring, Bring an outside audience in sometimes takes a wildly different point of view. So right, yeah, it's a, it's a, especially a lot of people who are who um who live on who've been on the island for a long time, yeah, and have been running their businesses the way that they've been running them, and they want to keep running them that way, which is yeah. totally understandable. Um, on in a normal situation, but in this case, um, it's going to be it's it's definitely a challenge. Um, it would be great to see. Uh, to see more people getting online the, on the island, whether it's via, you know, whoever is doing the work up here, Squarespace, Weebly, whatever. But it would be nice to see everybody online up here. At least it gives them an opportunity, a, an equal chance. Because right now, if you don't have a digital presence, you don't, presence you don't have, you're not on the same, on the same playing field, really. Right. Chris, do you have any sense, uh, and this is just something we're always trying to, fine tune of uh, what digital channels people tune into generally on the island like because because of what uh, like the guys were saying you you kind of go crazy if you don't pick a horse in terms of like social networks right. if you try to do everything everywhere people who are listening will stop listening because they're hearing the same thing three times everywhere you'll be exhausted and all of that and in general we've uh, we've majored in Facebook with a minor in Instagram. Uh, we haven't, we haven't found that, uh, that Twitter is significant at all for any, anything but barking at each other and yelling at the TV. Uh, but just kind of wondered what, how that lined up with, with your experience. Um, yeah, well, in your case, this is an example of, you know, what does it take for somebody to get online and get into social media? This is a really good example because every business is different. Um, Facebook is really easy. Instagram is really easy. Uh, they're the most popular platforms in, in, for marketing, in my opinion. They're the most effective platforms. YouTube is also a really popular platform. And I think in your case, YouTube would be a great direction to go to add it on there. Um, because you are, it's a visual art. And it's not a static visual art. And I think that YouTube would be a great addition. Yeah, that's, uh, we do host a few things, but we haven't really made a push because uh, like there's even some artistic uh, decisions there about because there are many people who say well just put it all online and it's like that's not really what we have to offer right. it might right. feel like it is but it's not but you can you can give people a taste and i think that's what i hear you saying is this is a great way to get pe give people a taste yeah uh, of what they might be missing and in, in our case they might be we might all be missing it for a while and, and yeah. like to stay present with our patrons and com and uh, uh, our patrons and customers while knowing 
Uh, in regard to live performing arts, it might be some time before any of us get what we want and it's okay to miss it. Uh, yeah. that's, that's not a bad thing to happen in our marketing space in the short term. And it's yeah. probably better than cutting ourselves off at the knees by trying to make a ton of offerings uh, right. that, that don't remind people of what we're all missing right now. Right. I think, yeah, right now would be an excellent time for the theater to start putting a lot of performances online. Um, and, you know, you can embed them in the community theater website. You can have them on YouTube. But in tw with Twitter, you can promote them. Uh, with Instagram and Facebook, you can promote them as well. So create, putting that content, besides the website, putting the content on YouTube and promoting them, that content through Facebook uh, or Instagram would be a terrific idea. Right. And everything's, you know, uh, rights become a big issue for what, what you can put up. That's, and yeah, that's it. To, but we, we are, uh, we just today started announcing uh, moves toward uh, a more online version of the Playwrights Festival that will okay. be more tailored to, instead yeah. of trying to make something that happened on stage, move to this medium, uh, talking about well, what can you come up with that's native to this medium? Because now we've all been swimming in it and those are going, watching people try to adapt things to a Zoom environment is usually hot garbage, but, uh, but watching people work with things, especially now that we've all had some shared experience, uh, work with things that make sense for this medium and are native to it, some really good stuff can come and Playwrights Festival has always been just fascinating to me to watch how much uh, how much raw talent there is on the island uh, to give expression. So I'm glad we can do that. Anyway, I was just curious about about that from your perspective. So that really helps because we're always like we think it's we think our audience is mostly Facebook and in terms right. of promotion and. Right. Facebook with a minor and Instagram and some of those, depending on who we're trying to reach, uh -huh. we monkey with those levels a little bit because, right. because so you're, doing, uh, you're doing paid placement, paid promotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we haven't for a couple of months because we haven't had, we're like, <laughs> we'd love to sell you a ticket to a show. We don't know if we're going to offer. Right. Like <laughs> so you found it's been pretty, you, you think Facebook has been the most effective for you and Instagram second? We think so. Uh, but it's, it's just one of those finding out because the people it doesn't reach, it just, re like you said, it really doesn't reach, uh, and the nature of, and I think there are, there are other nonprofits and businesses on the island that are similar where, uh, where they are enough of community hubs that people who miss the digital message actually can get grumpy about what they didn't hear. Like, I didn't know about that, uh, but they're not plugged into the thing, but they wonder if there's something else we can do, which we're like, well, we're kind of getting everything out as much as we can, but there really is a divide where, uh, where I don't. Thinking about your demographics too. I mean, who are, what is the age range and what is the, uh, what is the digital proficiency level of the majority of your, of your patrons? Right. And the, and the newsletter is a staple. The, the email newsletter is a staple. We couldn't do without that. And that probably has our most exposure. If you, if you miss something in the newsletter, that's where the folks who are, who are much less proficient or native yeah. will still peruse the newsletter. It's the closest to an analog form for them. Too. It's, it's not that different from what came in the mailbox and people who might not be on other platforms are still very comfortable with the email. Are you tracking um, how many people are opening your newsletter? And we are, and I don't know that directly. I'd have to hit up our marketing director, but, yeah. and we, we use constant contact. Uh, I don't love them, uh, but, but it's one of those things where you get enough in, in a proprietary system of any kind and, yeah. and migrating. Like I, th I think we would, we, in terms of production of, of the newsletter, I think we would be happier with MailChimp or another platform, but the cost of that migration, just the, the learning curve cost of that is probably higher than is worth it. Uh, I just, I think constant contact kind of, kind of, a, it's kind of the enterprise software of, 
of newsletters where it's like, well, if you like everything to cost more and be more of a pain to move around uh, and you smack enterprise at the end of it, then constantly like contact Salesforce. your package. Yeah. Like Salesforce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I, sorry to be so that's boring and directed. That's, 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 it's, that's, that's a question that I think other, other uh, economic sectors face in their own ways as well. Yeah, exactly. If somebody's a builder um, or if they're an architect, are they building older traditional style homes or are they building more modern type, um, you know, lead homes? They're going to have different kinds of demographics oftentimes. Uh, but I think that the newsletter, sending out a newsletter for you is great. It's the best way to get new content to your clients without having to tell them, you know, go to the website to get this, send them the newsletter with the new content and then, then shift them over. So you sounds like you're doing a great job. It, it's hard to know right now because what we're all doing right now yeah but we do have the advantage that that other other organizations may not in being a nonprofit where we can still we can still talk about our needs and and accept charitable contributions which a number of businesses are just like unless they hop on the GoFundMe train uh, right like, it's I right. either need to turn this into earned revenue or uh, or I'm going to have some, I'm going to have a bad time. Right, right. Um, and, you know, there are other, are you using any nonprofit so, um, financial management software at all? Uh, the financial side of things, we're all on, we're just on QuickBooks. And then uh, the theater management, which ties together all of our, both our ticketing and our, our donor relations CRM stuff yeah. is is a combined package from theater manager but our new director of development yeah. is going through a, a course from TechSoup that that goes over what do you need in in donor management software so we can look at is this our best uh our best option moving forward or not uh, because that's a separate question yeah well that sounds like it's the right direction which is yeah we, we've been it's this is a good no one wanted this to happen, but this is a great, for us, this is a great environment for which it, to navigate it. Like I, I work for a theater in Seattle and that's just much tougher work than, uh, than what we have here, where we have that built in sense of all being in it together. Uh, it's, it's not hard to, to mount a campaign when you don't have to make that sales pitch. Uh, this is, everyone wants the theater to succeed. And I think everyone trusts the theater to, we're not going to open until we think it's very reasonably safe for our patrons and, uh, and in line with Dr. James's recommendations. And from what I'm hearing too, from people at state, um, some people we know that it's probably at the earliest, the end of June gonna open at the earliest. Yeah, yeah, as the, as the guy doing projections, like I've done, cancellation projections through August, uh, but I don't want to go farther out. There's that temptation when you get that that flat playing field. You're like, well, how do I plan for this? And then I think, oh wait, it's still May. What would my what would my three month ago predictions of May have looked like? Well, they wouldn't look anything like what I'm doing. So I how much energy I put in that direction is really a moving about three month window because yeah. everything and even that is optimistic in terms of what we what we think we can understand. I hope there are good surprises in that th those three months because yeah. I'd love to be able to. We'd love to be able to welcome uh, patrons back and and navigate what it looks like for for them to be comfortable doing that too. Because that's a whole other thing that we can right we can make people aware of what we can do. But none of us, including the patrons themselves, know. What am I going to be comfortable doing? Because we're kind of, whatever precautions we take, we're kind of the, uh, we're the very kind of thing that is warned against. Oh, would you like to be next to a whole bunch of people? Well, would you like to do that for two, two to three hours? In like close space. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Are uh, Lee? Are you guys? Uh, is the theater? Are they? Are they projected to be a phase three uh, business? I don't, I don't think we have uh, a lot we could significantly do until phase four. Okay. Yeah. And even then, like the, the governor's plan makes a lot of sense. I'm like, I'm not even sure we're phase four. We're kind of phase four, but 
we're kind of beyond phase four. There are some things, and we're looking at what are what are smaller uh, productions we can do because looking at what are ways we could open the main uh, theater. Uh, what's our seating? If we look at if we look at the same kinds of family or family style groups uh, as self isolation has, sure. uh, that that ups the number of seats we could we could reasonably sell. But there's there's just a lot of there's so much math. There's so much. Yeah, math. there's yeah. It's like what restaurants are pivoting <laughs> to. I, I've been doing these other small business webinars. Um, and we were talking with a guy yesterday who um, has a restaurant out on the mainland and he's, you know, they're, they've reopened, but they're, even though they can be at 50% capacity they're when they run the math on like where they can park different parties, it's like, they're, it's really more like 30%, but that's okay because they're also integrating all these new workflows, you know, with their employees. And there's a lot of, you know, figuring things out. So for them in a way, even though having smaller business when they reopen, you know, isn't great, at least it's some business and it is, it is helping them avoid a, an onslaught, you know, of, 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 or an uncontrollable situation, um, in their business, which, you know, which, which they're, you know, most people are, would probably like to stay away from at this point. Um, Every, everybody, everybody's curves flattening. It wasn't just the, the hospital curve and, yeah. and seeing those adaptations that I think, I think some of those adaptations will stick around, uh, Sure. Really, I think I think people will get used to takeout in a way that they want before and find that it works. And hopefully, I mean, there are a lot of us who might be sick of being at home with family too, but uh, a lot of people are learning values of, of shared meals and shared time in a way that we might not have appreciated before. So it'll be interesting to see how that moves and trying to find our way to move into that space. I kind of wish we had a a trove of mannequins uh, because that is, a, I've seen uh, restaurants do that and that would be great for our space to, yeah. to occupy some of the unoccupiable seating with mannequins, with, with outfits from our costume shop. I was going to say um, I've been in the costume shop before. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, that would be awesome to experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, there, there are way, there are things we could do. So it's great to be with, I'm glad, with the move to phase two and on at least we're able to have more of our staff be able to work together. Sure. Uh, and, and so everybody's like, you don't, we're not short creativity. Uh, it's, it's just the, the, uh, the hurdle is a little higher. There's not, there's not enough web presence to really change anything other than letting people know we miss you too. I understand. Well, and gets us back to the newsletter. There you go. So, uh, Gail, you've been awfully quiet. You have anything you want to chime in on about, or? That's Gail. It's unmuting. Gail also has a Tweety mic, so we have to it may or may not work. If you're talking, Gail, we can't hear you. I don't remember how we fixed it yesterday. <laughs> Mickey, we have to <laughs> someday we have to figure out what's going on with Gail's microphone. Well, she could uh, if she has a question, she could go through chat because I know Gail, but your you were. Your business was sort of uh, going through the same boat of getting, getting up online. So, yeah, if you'd like to uh, text that over chat, we can just discuss it that way. If that's easier, I'm getting that mic going. Yeah, this was well. We'll have to figure out Gail's setup there. I don't know why. I feel your pain, man. <laughs> so D, does that mean, uh, let's see, it, it was the, uh, so no teddy bear picnic this year, right? I, I don't think so, which is a, which is a real bummer. Uh, one of the things that was really interesting to me last year was to see, uh, because that was my, that was the first time I was really able to take in the picnic. Uh, I only came in 
in summer of 2018. And uh, we saw so many people we don't see at other times of the year. And I think it's, I th think it's really interesting to think about who feels like this is their theater and sure. who, who is that not in the equation. And there's something different about the fact that that, that engages families and is something that cats offers at no, at no cost to families that uh, brings in a whole host of people who we don't see as much or don't see at all. Uh, right. so it makes us, even though, uh, even though people, we always offer uh, reduced and no cost tickets to anyone who needs them, uh, that alone is, that doesn't lower that ramp the same way as an open event does. Sure. sure. Well, I have to say I've been up on the island um, mostly, well, mostly full time for almost 10 years now. And I, uh, I think I've been to your theater more uh, than in the 20 years I lived in LA. So mm. you guys are, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys some pull some uh, serious business there. I mean, it's great. We, you know, we've seen all, all a whole variety of things there. So we're very, very pleased with the direction that the theater's gone, you know, has been able to go. So. Thanks. That's good to hear. So what about uh, outdoor performances? Uh, we've had some conversations and we're continuing to have them. We just don't have anything to announce yet. Uh, but uh, having some, and some, some of it depends on, uh, on who's performing too, whether it's one of the touring acts. We had our usual summer slate of touring acts, uh, but uh, are probably, we're having very few of them, if at all, uh, uh, and it depends on how many of them there are. Like there was one act we wanted to work with, but there are eight people there. So not only do I have to distance the audience, but I have to think about how close, can they do what they do? Right. right. Well, that's you can get there. nine people in a Zoom. So, you know, that's. <laughs> right. <laughs> all all on one yeah. 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 We've got this, uh, this Brady Bunch uh, Hollywood Squares configuration and we're nailing it. But, yeah. but the thought, uh, and I think the, the director of the Guthrie Theater in Minnesota uh, had a quick like five minute YouTube uh, bit on when they made the decision uh, to cancel until t and not to reopen for performances until 2021. And he did this great uh, dive on talking about uh, the 2,500 plus years history of theater and how much it's come through. And uh, it's really encouraging while being sad, uh, yeah. but also thinking about as we continue to move, like he talked about, well, theaters existed through plagues over and over. And, and that's very true and encouraging. And at the same time, I don't know if a culture's ever tried to dodge one until now. And that's a really different prospect uh, than because now we actually know enough to know that if we all stay in our homes, uh, this doesn't move. The virus doesn't go away either. It just doesn't move. Right. And, uh, and it's like, okay, we could do that. We can do that for a long time and we should. Uh, but, uh, but what's a way forward look like? I think that's still, we've, we've bought a lot of very smart people a lot of time. I think we're all kind of waiting to see what they did with it because, right. uh, because there, there really isn't the art form without some kind of coming together again. Uh, yeah. The art form is about coming together. Right. Well, culture and the and the and the dearth of connection, or learning right. to use these new connection techniques that we have yeah. now. And I love this, like eat the technology up with a spoon. But there is that there is that ongoing question of what's it, yeah, what's it what's it look like to live this way? Because there is a bit of it that. And I think we've all felt it at one time or another during where we've been so far, where it's like, well, if we live the rest of our lives this way, it's a bit of a living death. And at that point, uh, we, we don't get to tell stories the same way in the theater and the stories we told would be terrible. Like these, yeah. are, these are not, <laughs> no one is going to be singing the songs of our, of our couch sitting. Like this is not. It's not inspiring. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
right. Uh, yeah, the dirges uh, that will be written out yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah. Art, art engages grief. And as long as we, I, I think it's very wise and I'm very supportive of, sure. uh, of avoiding any of the unnecessary grief because the stuff we have to deal with is already crushing. But as a way forward, we're going to have to grieve and we're going to have to tell those stories somewhere, sometime. Yeah. Well, as I keep trying to articulate to people and, you know, it's a constantly developing viewpoint, you know, I mean, I look at, I look at this, this moment in time right now that I'm sharing with four of you. And I've never met any of you in person. Mickey, I feel like I know you like a brother now, but we've still, and I've been working alongside Mickey for eight weeks and I've never been in the same room with him, but I feel fortunate because through this connection, through the, through, through the internet and through visual medium, I've gotten to know Lee and Chris and Mickey and Gail's like my, Gail's like my half sister now, um, in, in a ways that, you know, just being on the phone or being over email doesn't convey. And it's, it's, you know, we're, we've lost our connection, you know, because we're not, we can't all be in the same place, but in a way, you know, if you think about it, this conversation wouldn't have happened now with the five of us in, in under any other circumstance necessarily. We wouldn't be meeting at Cafe Demeter and having this conversation, or we could be, but you know, that would be, that'd be in a different lifetime. So there's, there's opportunity in everything that we, we do. And I don't want to get too like, but it's, it, it is, it is, you know, it's moments like these where there's a lot going on and we're all working and we're, you know, we're working at EDC to, you know, try to find a path forward for as many businesses as fast as possible. But you, you know, I felt fortunate to be making these kinds of connections with people across the islands um, in, in, in these special ways. So I, I'm one, I, for one, I'm grateful for the technological assist. In that. I agree. Yeah. I'm uh, anybody? Just trying nope. to, Try to, if all of us can just try to make the most, uh, the, the best of what we can in the situation yeah. to try and keep you sane. It's really <laughs> all of us can do at this point. Sure. Um, you have any final thoughts, Chris? Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up and uh, let everybody go off and have their real lunch. Yeah. Uh, just, I just hope that everybody is able to find their, the time and the budget, uh, most importantly, the time to get online. Because right now, I... I don't think this is just going to last through June. I think it is going to be into 2021. Um, so I think that if people start gearing up now, uh, there may, they may be able to save some of their summer business. Uh, but if it's going to be through the fall, it's, it's going to be a really hard summer. Sure. Uh, but it's on the upside, we live on the Island and we can self quarantine at Mount Young or South beach or wherever. So, uh, I, yeah, if, if anybody has any questions, um, Gail or D Lee, just let me know, send me an email, uh, again, if it's, whether it's questions for me or about the industry in specific, uh, just let me know. And that's Chris at Tiffin GIF, right? That is it. Yep. T I F A N D G I F. I'm just going to throw that in the chat. Sorry. I should, I should have done this earlier, uh, but I got so sucked into the conversation we were having. I I just plumb forgot. Great. Thanks, John. Well, thank you guys. This was uh, kind of relaxing. Uh, Chris, Great, thank you for uh, being our guest. Oh, I'm sorry, B. There's that uncomfortable silence. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lee and uh, Gail and Mickey for, for showing up. Um, you know, we'll, this will be online for folks to, uh, you know, think about. And if you want to just talk business strategy about um what what an online identity and and and, and would look like for your business because there are a lot of different types of businesses up here um please feel free to reach out to us at edc feel free to reach out to chris at tiff and gif they're in friday harbor uh but obviously they work with businesses across uh across across the islands certainly beyond um and uh you know we'd like to see as, as, as with everything, we'd like to see everybody um, succeed and move forward um, at, at all best possible speed. So thank you guys for, for coming. Thank you.